Hi everybody, I'm Joe Apello. To my left is George Connor. We're All Sports Talk. I'm here from Nutmeg TV. Um, George, golf. What's going on in the world of golf? Golf. We're getting uh, towards the end of the season now. The last major of the year for the men uh, starts tomorrow. We're filming this on August 8th. 8th? 8th, yeah. So uh, it's the 100th PGA Championship at Belle Reve. Where's that? Uh, Bell Reeves out in the St. Louis area, so Louis? it's going to be a hot, steamy okay. uh, week. The go golf course is really wet, a lot of thunderstorms, that sort of thing, so okay. probably going to be a lot of low scoring. Matches never get rained out, do they? They play them at some point? They will They will do everything to get they it in, yeah. Get so it. thunder and lightning, obviously, uh, they, they'll stop. If it's raining, they'll, they'll just go ahead and play. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, occasionally if the weather's bad enough, they'll finish on a Monday, but uh, for a major, they wouldn't, they wouldn't shorten okay. an event to 54 holes. Okay. This is the last year that the PGA is going to be played in August. It's been played in August for years and years and years. Next next year, and we talked about it on an earlier show, they're really mixing up the schedule. So the Players' Championship, which was traditionally in March, moved to May. They play that on Mother's Day weekend. That one goes back into March. The PGA Championship goes in May. So okay. you got uh, you got a major in, in What's April. What's the biggest golf tournament of, of the year? As far as the pro Worldwide, the Open Championship. The Open's the best Yeah, one. we call it the British Open over here, but the Open Championship. So you're going to have April will have the Masters. Uh, well, March would have the Players' Championship. April, Masters. May, PGA Championship. June, U.S. Open. Okay. July, Open Championship. Uh, so they're really moving everything forward. Okay. And then uh, they'll also, like we said, they'll move up the FedEx Cup and, and all that, the, the year-end stuff, to, to just not compete at all with the, not with the, the NFL. Fall, not in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what does a, a typical pro golfer do from the last tournament in July or August to? Oh, there's, the tournaments keep going. Oh, OK. So uh, like this year, the FedEx uh, Cup will run out in uh, late September. But it's not as publicized. Then they'll have the Ryder Cup. And then the, the 2019 season will actually start in October. Oh, okay. And they'll, they'll play a few, you know, they'll have, I think, three or four events. They take a break basically for December, and then in January they, they keep, they keep okay. rolling. So there's not a, a traditional off-season like there used to be. Okay. And then the big, big, big news. We should do this. I think we should do this. Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson are putting up their own That's money right, I saw that. for a $10 million, $10 million 18-hole match. They're going to play it either Friday or Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend. Okay, winner take all. Winner take all. So I, th I think you and I should do that. Yeah, why we'll not? put up ten bucks <laughs> and we'll go play golf. Uh, we gotta make it worth our while. Twenty. <laughs> okay, twenty bucks. <laughs> maybe twenty. Maybe twenty-five. 20 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you know, coming up, so you got the, the PGA Championship. Uh, then they'll, they'll they'll get right into the FedEx Cup uh, shortly thereafter, and then the Ryder Cup's coming up. Which is a, it's a every other year event. Uh, it's, in, it's in Paris this year. Paris, wow. And a lot of a lot of discussion back and forth. You know, the, the Americans won forever, and then Ryder Cup is at the team. That's thing? Uh, Europe versus the U.S. Oh, okay, 12, right, right. Twelve golfers from each. Okay. From each. On each How do you team. make that team? Uh, they have a point system that runs yeah. for two years. Okay. Uh, so as soon as the Ryder Cup's over, like I say, the next season will start. They'll start accumulating points. It's mo it is more weighted for the current year. Okay. And then there's a couple uh, captains picks. Okay. Uh, on each teams, it, it's. Uh, I tell you, I, I know you don't watch a whole lot of golf. That's fun. It, it's really fun golf okay. to watch. Uh, it's the, one of the few times that you can actually see you watch team golf. Okay. And uh, yeah, it gets a little bit over the top. Sometimes fans get a little out of control, okay. but. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like golf at a football match. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no alcohol involved, right? Uh, well, <laughs> not from the players. <laughs> well, the big, big, big scandal in uh, college football was uh, Urban Meyer, yeah. or Urban Liar, as some people call him. Oh. Unfortunately, he's... yeah. I like him. At this I, point, it's a legend. It's, it's a, a good, legend. He's a good, good guy. But you know what? In this day and age of, uh, of social media scrutiny, man, you you got to. Cross your eyes and dot your, t you know. Yeah. You, you got to watch everything that you do, and yeah. you got to document stuff. And if you have any kind of accusations or any kind of uh, um, character issues, you got to got to follow up on that. Yeah. And, and do the right thing. Uh, and evidently, with this uh, Zach Smith that's being uh, that was actually fired from Ohio State. Um, mm -hmm. The 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 background on that was uh, he played for Urban Meyer at Bowling Green. Mm -hmm. um, way back in the day, and then uh, when he graduated from college, um, I guess he wanted to go into some coaching, and Urban took him on as a staff. Um, he, so he was with uh, Urban at, at the University of Florida, and Urban Meyer was there from 205 to 210. During that time, there was 31 reported arrests of University of Florida Gators. 
It's reported. Now that 31 in Re five years. Reported arrests, yeah. You know, okay. five, six a year. I mean, you know, it's obvious. And I, actually, I, I'm reading um, the book on uh, Aaron Hernandez it's called All American Murders. And uh, he allegedly shot some guy. And he was a freshman, and no, no charges were even even filed against him. So he got rid of that. When you're down at the University of Florida, as is most of these major universities, you are a god on campus. You do yeah. whatever you want. Go now, to Aaron was at Miami? Or? Huh? Aaron Hernandez went to Miami. He correct? went to Florida. Straight he, did. he played right, for Myra. Right, right, he played right, for Myra. Right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. Matter of fact, uh, when he was a freshman, they had Tim Tebow was his. Uh, I just associate all the yeah all the arrest was. No, Tim Tebow was his uh, mentor, bodyguard, whatever you want to call him, mm -hmm. role model, and because uh, Tebow, you know, didn't drink or anything, you know, right. and uh, he took right. him around, kind of kept an eye on him. Um, but the problem with, with Aaron Hernandez was when he went home. I guess uh, yeah, he, never, he was okay when he was down there, okay in their terms, whatever that means. And then when he went home. Uh, back up this way, Connecticut. He just uh, went back to some old ways and his posse, and just kept. Yeah, and, and in yeah, and we've, uh, you know, there, there was there was reports that he w he was really looking to get traded away from the Patriots, right? Because he was too close to home, right? Yeah, right. Never broke that. Probably would have been a good bond. thing for him to be in, probably, yeah, Cleveland or yeah. somewhere. Interesting about his his uh, his background, though, as I was. Uh, I guess he was an amazing athlete at Bristol Central. I think it was Central. I don't know. Bristol yeah, he was Central. Bristol Central. Central yeah. was, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and when he was a sophomore, I believe, sophomore, freshman sophomore, his brother DJ was a, a, a senior, so he wanted to play together. Okay. And then DJ went to play UConn, and Aaron continued to play. I guess his father died when he was, a, I think, in his junior year in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron's father went to a, he went to the hospital for routine hernia operation, actually, and never came out. Wow. And that was huge with his, as far as a life changer. And I guess uh, his father was like uh, the town, the, the town leader. Everyone loved, uh, okay. I think his name was Dennis as well, and loved the guy and, and all the football games. And he, you know, and he, he'd take anybody in the house. And he was, you know, everybody was over at Aaron's house and DJ's mm -hmm. house. Yeah, okay. And they had like a great, great time. And then when he, when he passed, it was. Uh, it hit hard. It really hit hard for yeah. Aaron, especially. You know, DJ was able to survive because he was older. Mm -hmm. But Aaron just like, took took to, into some bad ways. And uh, also, the mother had something to do with She had an affair with, um, I think, the father's best friend or something during that time. So that was another thing that they had to deal with. Then the mother also got caught taking numbers for some bookies in Bristol. Oh, so really? Point, yeah. Really? And then uh, she, uh, I don't know, they had probation, but she, she didn't do any time for that. But they she got caught answering yeah. phones for some of the bookies in Bristol. So mm -hmm. there was some background there. Um, so back to Urban Meyer. Um, when he left Florida amidst some controversy, he got a $21 million buyout from from there. I mean, it's amazing this world where you, you screw up, you don't do the right thing, and then all of a sudden, here's 21 million, go away. Yeah, oh yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Then you go, then he, then he spent a year at ESPN, probably makes decent money there. Sure. Uh, you know, doing, uh, doing color there. And then he, uh, Surfers at Ohio State, where he went to Ohio State, mm -hmm. and so he started there and had been very successful. And then 2015, allegedly, uh, Zach Smith's wife, who was abused and battered by him, went to Shelly Myers, Urban's wife, to tell her about the abuse she was going through. And then, um, you know, she, she allegedly told Urban, and Urban, that there's a controversy. He didn't do anything about her. He said he didn't know anything about it, which yeah. is hard to believe. Where you're, you know, one of your players. Your coach's wife tells your wife. Right, right, you know, right. I mean, right. Uh, yeah, you I think you would talk. So that was a main bone of contention. There was another time I read this, another story where there was a party that Zach Smith and his wife were at, at with the Myers, and there was some shouting and abuse going on at that party, and they took off. And I guess, you know, there's two sides to every story. So, that, you know, he might not be the bad boy all the time, and I guess she has some issues too. But, I mean, the thing is that she was, she was trying to uh, – Make people aware of it, and nobody did anything. Yeah. So, you know, what does that mean? I, you know, that's that's what they're going through now. They gave it two weeks to uh, figure out what they're going to do. Yeah. I personally think he's done. I don't think I don't think he'll he'll be able to recoup from this. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think they have him back. I mean, if they have him back, what do you think you're going to have at games? You have like two thousand women protests outside the stadium. Sure. Game. You have all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah. And then you're going to have the potential recruits. You're not going to play for that, that guy that, that, that do anything about, you know, yeah. uh, domestic abuse. So yeah. I think that's a real, real, real issue. And Ohio State's one of the better schools as far as acting quickly on these issues. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't fool around. Now, the other thing that Zach Smith is Earl Bruce's uh, great, his grandson. Earl Bruce is one of the mm -hmm. legendary mm -hmm. uh, coaches at Ohio State, and he was Urban Meyer's mentor. So, I mean, yeah. that, there's a lot of, you know, 
a lot, a lot of ties there. So, I mean, obviously, Urban probably was trying to protect the kid, and uh, Mike cost him his job. He, in there. fact, knew about it, was, yeah, yeah felt loyal, yeah. loyalty to the guy or whatever else. Yeah. But it's just a shame that it comes down to that. And now they're Ohio State survived like they all do. I mean, you got our Bryles went through the, all these different coaches that, that yeah. made. made Big mistakes, and you know, you know, school goes on. I mean, so yep. it's just unfortunate that uh, in this day and age, man, like Rick Pitino, I got all these guys that you know, Rick Pitino's got all these legendary coaches, or yeah, you know, under, and, under and the, the thing is that you know, most of these coaches, from my from what I can understand, they they know all the players, everything. They know, you know, yeah, pretty, pretty much, you know. See, I, I kind of hear two sides of that though, because the, the joke was when was any any player that played under Spurrier. If you were on the defensive side, Spurrier never knew you. Yeah, yeah. You know, didn't, know, didn't even know your name. Yeah, because right, you got what? You got 60 guys on right. a squad plus practice players, this right. and that, and the other thing. And yep. so, depending on, on on what the head coach does, so Spurrier would be the head coach and basically the offensive coordinator. Right. And would turn all the defense over all to somebody defense, else. Yeah. But somebody's somebody knows everything. Right. You know, there, there's a big enough coaching staff that that any player. There right. is, any player has a coach that knows everything that's going on in that yeah, guy's life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got all these guys you've got to keep track of. And they also have academic advisors and tutors and all that kind of sure. stuff. And it's sure. a process. I mean, you almost have to be a uh, basically a, a CEO of the yeah. college program. You, you know, need to be a lawyer, too. You really do. You know? I, uh, I'm the assistant coach of the women's golf team at the University of Hartford. Okay. So just a few weeks ago, I took, I had to take an exam. Uh, in order to recruit. Okay. And so um, if if you know prior to me passing the test, and I did pass, got a 96 percent shot. Right. Uh, if, if say you know your daughter is uh, you know hot shot golf, you know yeah. high school golf yeah. or whatever else, and you started a conversation with me, right. hey George, you know, I'd have to say no, Joe, don't right. say another word. I can't talk about right. it. So I had to take a test, and and so the head coach says, oh George, you know, just study uh, chapter 13 instead of recruiting. That's all you need to know. Da, 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 da. I look at chapter 13. It's like 80 something pages long. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it goes on and on and on and on. So, and that's only one chapter. Did you say most was common sense or was it common? No, no, it's not common sense. It's the NCAA. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. But, you know, a, a booster can do this, but a booster can't do that. And, and you know, you Crazy. can. I, you know, I can go to a memorial service or a funeral of a yeah. prospective student athlete. I'm allowed to go there. I can't recruit there. But it's just. You can't, I, can't talk to And I think what it is is over, over years, you can kind of tell as you're reading through the the, the the whole chapter, and it just reads like like a law book. Boom, okay. boom, 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 boom. That these things get added because of a, an incident. It is, a, yeah. You know, and and so this, the 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 requirement that you have to report something. Yeah. Unfortunately, there was probably an instance where right. they discovered that somebody knew about something and right. didn't report it, and they said, okay, well, we're going to add that. Right. And we're going to add that. I'm sure there's a lot of instances where. Uh, they all break the rules, but you will get caught, discovered, and if you do get caught, you, your, your head coach got to say, well, he should know this, or yeah. he's passed his test, or he's certified, so that's yeah. how they kind of... Yeah, and then every university, and probably one of the most important uh, positions, we'll, we'll call it, in an athletic department is the compliance officer. Yeah. And, and I'm, I guarantee at, at any university, that guy gets more emails, text messages, phone calls. And you probably have a lawyer background, a law background, pretty much? Or? Uh, no. Like who, what kind of guy does that? A compliance guy? Who is a that? Compliance guy is, uh, you, know, you know, an athletic director type, yeah. you know, and somebody knows, working yeah. towards, that, towards that place. Yeah. Because unfortunately, well, it may be at, at bigger universities, um, they're not making lawyer type money. Okay. You know, but uh, but you know, a law background or some familiarity with yeah. law would help. Yeah. But if if you're, I mean, it's to the point. If if you, if you want to do anything, yeah. you either you, you got to look it up or you know, yeah. and then now it's up to interpretation. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm going to do anything, I'd say, well, I I got to check with like, my yeah. compliance well, officer. Okay. Can I do this? Can right. I? That's a smart thing to do. You know, whether it's you know. whether it's you know. And if you do get blindsided by something that you don't know of, you got to you got to yeah. oh, you got to call on the carpet yeah. and say, "What's going on there?" Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Report it to NCAA right away. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then yep. cover yourself because yeah. otherwise, that's how you get. That's how these guys all got caught. Yeah. You know, because they they didn't say anything, and then years later, somebody sure. Snapchats or whatever, and then all of a sudden, yeah. it starts the ball rolling. Now, now you're like five years later, like, "Why?" Well, you know? Yeah. 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 What are you gonna yeah. say? So my my piece, like I said, it was just it was just on recruiting. How many times can you? Uh, observe a player, contact a player, uh, evaluate a player, you know, all that sort of thing. What what constitutes a, a right. contact? Is right. it a phone call? Is it, you know, if I right. if I just happen to pass you at Stop and Shop, 
and say, hey, you know, how you doing? That's, you know, That's that is or that isn't, and, yeah. I mean, and all that kind of stuff. He came and buy someone dinner. Oh, no. You know what I mean? No, you take no. somebody out, and, and it's my turn, I'll treat, and yeah. that could be considered an yeah. NCAA violation. Well, uh, and that happened to Tiger Woods. When Tiger Woods was at Stanford University as a student, he, I think he did two years there, he and Arnold Palmer went out for lunch. Arnold yeah. Palmer picked up the tab. It's like, so what? You gotta understand that. <laughs> the NCAA violations. It's amazing. Tiger had to sit out of time. Didn't, uh, didn't uh, was it Des Bryant do that in college? Yeah, when he was at Oklahoma State, yeah. I think he did something. He had lunch with uh, with somebody and got caught. Sure. He, got, he, yeah. he lost eligibility there. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Des Bryant, I think that uh, I think that Cleveland's going to sign him. Uh, they, oh, you don't. Okay. They cut that guy um, last year's uh, second round draft draft choice. What was it, Josh? Uh, Doc? No, tell his name. Doc. Uh, I don't know, he was a second round draft pick. They cut him. I think they clear space for uh, for Des Bryant. I think that's what's going to happen there, but uh, yeah, I don't know, because he's got to get signed soon. Yeah. Um, football ways, Odell is uh, negotiating. Yeah. That's going on and on. Um, hey, football's here, man. Tomorrow. Yeah, first, exactly. first preseason that's game's right. tomorrow. Giants Browns tomorrow. Are you going to yeah. watch? I'm going to watch that. I'm going to see uh, Davis Webb and I'm going to see Sa Saquon. I think okay. Davis Webb and. Uh, um, Kyle and Dad are going to um, both split the game, so Eli's not going to play the first game. But yeah, no, I, no. I want to I see Davis Webb a little bit. Yeah, I think he's going. I think he's going to be, yeah. be a good player. I think the size, and then uh, you know, if you watch his exhibition games. Now, he, they got eighty-five guys. You never heard of any of these guys. No, 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 no. no Serious. No. I watched. I watched. The, hey, would you say the, wor the worst games to watch would be the first and the last? Like, are most of the, uh, the, the starters going to play? The third one's like the dress rehearsal, they say. Okay. So and the, the second one, and the third would be the, the ones yeah. where you'd see most of your familiar names. The first and second, you stay away from the third. It should be your starters. And then the okay. fourth, you kind of like, whoever needs more work okay. would get it. And then, okay. then, then they're ready to so, go. So tomorrow night, I don't have to stay up late? Uh, first quarter, you might want to watch. I don't know. Depends. Get a little Actually, taste of it. <laughs> it's a 7 o'clock game, I won't be home in time. <laughs> I'll be sitting in construction traffic on 84 yeah. in Hartford. <laughs> watch, those, watch those Browns. See so, yeah, how good they're going to be. Um, yeah, so that starts tomorrow. I think all all 30, I mean, 32 teams are all, they're all playing tomorrow. Um, they're, all, they're, all, they're all playing uh, this weekend. This so, weekend, yeah. This weekend. The one game start, tomorrow start, and then. Uh, they're all playing this weekend. So yeah. they're, all, they're all in full action. Yeah. Including your Jets. Sam Darnell just uh, ended his holdout. That was weird because uh, I was. Yeah. I guess the money's on the issue. It's, it's it's a language, whatever the heck that means. I don't know. Yeah, it terms. Was, it yeah. Was, yeah, it was yeah. crazy. So everybody's making a big deal, but he's 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 all set. Yeah. I think he starts week one. Yeah. I think they start on week one. I think I, I think they're they're done with all. So this. the whole Bridgewater thing. I think they're done. Yeah. I think it's a matter of uh, you know what happens. Bridgewater plays well. I don't think they put him on on the taxi squad. I think they'll they'll try to maybe get something for him. Yeah. Somebody, somebody else, you know, some other quarterback goes down somewhere. Yeah. So in, 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 and, Jets, in Jets fashion, they'll make a bad trade for him. Yeah. And, and Bridgewater's not stupid. He knows that he showcased himself. Yeah. You know, three games, so maybe someone needs somebody, and you know, he had some talent. And oh yeah. He's back yeah. from an injury. You know, he, he could help somebody. Yeah. Especially with the way the quarterbacks go down all the time in the league. Sure. Um, New England signed Eric Decker. So, oh, yeah. I, I you know, he's good for them. Possession receiver. He's yeah. Got enough guys. Uh, De I mean, Decker, you know, from what, from what he, you know, when he was with the Jets, he, he was a yeah. decent player. Just good guy. He, he would know nobody around. You yeah, know? His wife's a uh, country western singer, Jesse James. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You're a big country so, western guy. I am. I yeah. am. I never heard her. I don't know what she sings. <laughs> I never, <laughs> never heard one song by her. I wouldn't know her if she's. So she's that. a country western singer. She yeah. might not be a country western star. Star. It's a big okay. difference. Yeah. She's All a right. national. She's a national. She's no Shania Twain. No, she's not. Um, yeah, so uh, that kicks off. I guess what else happened with uh, football? Um, Antonio Brown sitting out a couple games. Uh, he's not going to play for a while. You see, he came into camp in the helicopter. <laughs> 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 These guys are unbelievable. Uh, and then uh, they had the Hall of Fame uh, ceremony this past weekend. Yeah, yeah. I actually watched that. I have, oh, did you? I obviously have no life. I watched the, the, the jacket ceremony Friday night, which I give the guys the jackets. It's pretty neat to have like a big uh, big runway with all the former players there. And then they announced the guy, and he comes down, and, you know, he's thanking everybody, high five, and they go to the. Uh, to the end of the uh, uh, of the line, of the receiving line. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And they, they all actually not only seven because one guy was missing. T.O. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. home uh, with his uh, little party. Anyway, so all, <laughs> all seven guys go all the way down, and you get, they had a mic finally. You can hear him go, "Thanks, I love you, man." All this kind of stuff. Yeah, all yeah, way down. yeah, yeah. And then they got to a, a podium. It looked like um, it looked like a um, WWE wrestling. Um, Arena with they had the arena in the middle and they had all the 
the fans around was in the Ohio Convention Center or something. And okay. They would, um, each Hall of Fame uh, recipient was able to choose his um, pre pre presentator for their yeah, jacket. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. For, that, for that night. Yep. So each had um, someone presentate um, their jacket to them. And they put it on, they walked around, and um, they showed some highlights on the thing. Um, Jerry Kramer was interesting. He's health issues, he's probably got to be 85, I'm thinking somewhere in that area. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah and his daughter presented him. Um, oh, nice. That was nice, yeah. Brian Dawkins was there. He's a very religious man. He kept um, thanking God and whatnot. I forget mm -hmm. who uh, his son might have presented him. Bobby Bethard, who was a, a general manager back in the day, he yep. was there. Robert Brazil, big linebacker from the Houston Oilers, was there. Brian Urlacher, the Bears. Yep. yep. Randy Moss, and then uh, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis is a, he's kind of a favorite of mine, even though he is a, He's, he had some controversy back in the beginning of his career. Little, with that thing. little yeah, controversy. Super Bowl. But yeah, he's a, he's, he's a polarizing figure, and he's the kind of guy I would not be surprised if he does politics at some point. Yeah. Maybe 10, 20 years. Really? He's got that, you know, he's like a preacher stuff, and he's, you know, a guy, and, this, and he's just, he, he's a pretty interesting guy. Do you see him as like, what, like mayor of Baltimore? Or? Uh, maybe you're like a presidential candidate at some point. Like, really? Yeah, I mean, at that point, yeah. Wow. I think he's that kind of a. It's been a, you know, a, yeah. There's been some professional yeah, athletes. That, yeah. right? Bill Bradley was a longtime yeah. New Jersey Princeton, senator. I Princeton, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, but, and, uh, uh, what, what, there was a, you said WWE. Guy. There was a professional wrestler that was a governor of Minnesota or somewhere out there. I don't know that one. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Jesse Ventura, um, the guy from uh, quarterback from one well, of quarterbacks was a. Um, was a senator. Who was Jack senator? Kemp. Jackie Kemp, that's who it was. Yeah, yeah so he was, was a, a Buffalo Bill Buffalo Bill player yeah. then became yep. Uh, yep. New York senator, I believe, and then made, yep. made some runs at, uh, yep. at at presidential races or it was on maybe a, an early ticket as a mm -hmm. potential like, vice president or something mm -hmm. like that, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty neat. Then they had the, um, so they gave all the coats on, uh, on Friday night. Yeah. Each guy said a little bit of something. It wasn't too too long, and then the next night they had the actual ceremony where they get the bust and uh, yep. they get the same person basically that presented them the coat is uh, helped them pull the, the sheet or the cloth off the bust. So got it, got it, the got the it. Okay. So, uh, All right. Um, the speeches, some speeches are you know kind of like, Ugh. and but some are are, are polarizing. Um, but they say Ray Lewis to last because he's he was so funny because um, not to beat a dead horse, but he. He actually preached on that thing. He was he wasn't behind the like the, the stanchion. Okay, so he, he was parading around and he was sweating. The guy was sopping wet, you know. <laughs> and he had the microphone and he was you know talking about Jesus and God and everything else. And and it was funny. He had he has got seven kids. Seven. Wow. Seven kids. But didn't show any. Didn't show his. I don't know, his wife, whatever, he didn't show, but he showed all the kids in the stands. So he, he, he's like, I love my children or my world. And he, and he says, this is kind of weird. I still kiss my kids on the lips, what he says. Right? Okay. And he's got two boys. They're, they look like they're about 16, 17, 18, somewhere in there. And okay. both guys are, and they're both, they, they were showing both boys when he said it. Both boys are like, no, he's not kissing me on the lips. Both of them said the same thing. Like, no, no, dad's not kissing me. You know, the girls were sitting there. It was funny. They were like, no, he's like, no, 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 no. Well, that would explain where the, where the wife was. <laughs> exactly. I, I, she has seven kids. Who knows? You know what? I'm staying home. You take the seven yeah. kids up to the Hall of Fame he thing, and I'm going to you know, just enjoy a nice, quiet weekend at home. A Cromartie moment. What has he got? <laughs> 13 kids by a different one or something? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, this year, I think they, but eight of them turned uh, seven this year. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember their names. Uh, yeah. I got Minnesota. I got uh, the Brian Urlacher said his speech. He was, he was pretty good. Um, uh, he has three kids. He has two girls and a boy. And they look, the girls look to be about 15, 16, 17, and the boy was about 8 or 10. Yep. And his wife was his wife was actually dropped dead beautiful. I mean, he yep. spectrum, him, and she was beautiful. I, and I don't know if that was his the mother of the kids or not. It was hard to figure. Okay. He, they don't, he doesn't really say the mother of my, you know. Okay. But, yeah, he said she's been there for me, da-da-da. So that, that was neat. And uh, Randy Moss was there talking about his... Uh, you know, ran Virginia where he grew up and you know the times he went through and they didn't have any water or heat and stuff like that. Yeah. He was growing up and how far he's come. And you don't realize how good uh, Randy Moss was when he was in the oh. pros. The guy was oh, unstoppable. 6'4". Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. never really got hurt. Uh, game changer. When he was with the Patriots the one year, I think they were undefeated that one year. They lost the Giants. I think Moss was a uh, receiver. I know. That, you know. I know. 
They get lost to the Giants that year, and they. They, I, I actually the la- This is the last Patriot game I went to, in, in Foxborough, uh, the year Favre was, was with the Jets. Okay. And he, I remember, cause I remember Randy Moss made just the filthiest catch I've ever seen yeah. in the end zone, yeah. to put the the Pats up just, you yeah. know, I don't know by a point or two. Yeah. And I would like to point out that the Jets, drove down the field and and won field goal, nice. or you know won the game on a field goal. And that was the last. Remember the Brett, Brett Favre, Favre game when, when his father died at night? I don't remember. No, he was playing for uh, he was playing for Green Bay. I think. I think he was yeah. still with the Packers and Packers. Yeah. And uh, his father died. And he played. Father died a weekend and had a Monday night game or something. And he went out there, which yeah, was out of his right. mind. That's he had like right, four yeah. or five touchdown passes. Yeah, that's right. That was amazing. That was yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's uh, he was fun to watch. Yeah. Far, yeah. So anyway, the Hall of Fame they had all that all that stuff, and and T.O. had his little ceremony in the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing I don't understand. He said he was protesting, not the other men in the Hall of Fame, but the way that the committee go about their business or selecting. And, and he goes, not because it took five years, four or five four or five votes for me to get in. He goes, it was because of the methods that they use to select. So I didn't understand what he was talking about, to be honest with you. Yeah. I don't know what he meant by so that. So he's trying to make a protest, but from what you could tell, he, he didn't get a, he, he didn't get a, a, his point across. I, I didn't know if they, you know, I guess he was, he still holding grudges that they, they thought that he had attitude issues and the reason why he wasn't in there is because, you know, he, he brought people the wrong way and he was outspoken and this and that. And I don't understand, I don't understand it. It made me humming us, protesting. When you protest something, there's there's ways and there's time and place to protest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's certain times you don't protest. Like, again, we're going to talk about just about five minutes. The national anthem. Why do you why do you kneel for the national anthem? What does that prove to anyone that you're protesting? What? Your your national anthem is for your flag and for the country. If you want to protest, you go to communities during the day. You work with the inner city kids. You work with your police officers, and you, and you make things better. You don't just sit there and kneel and say, "Okay, I protest." Okay, so what? What, what are we going to do? Yeah, I, that, I don't understand all and, that. And that, I think, one one of the problems with the, when you know, and Kaepernick obviously was was the one that started it. Right. Is is the misinterpretation and the lack of understanding of what exactly he's protesting right. and, and I think a lot of the the more conservative people immediately say you know they, they assigned it to he's disrespecting veterans right well, I don't think that was and I'm not defending anybody right. in this case but right. I don't think that was Kaepernick's uh, intention right. was to disrespect right. you know military veterans yeah. you know US but uh, you know you, you protest but if you're if your message isn't clear right then the protest just becomes there was, something that people talk about. But there was one owner. I don't know. If sure, I don't know if it was Robert Kraft who it was. He said that. Um, he said, "Okay, so if you want to protest?" He goes, you "Stand for the national anthem, and I will give you time, and I should pay you during the week to go protest or to do things to help help the situation." Really? I forget who was that? Who it was? It was, it was like you know, it's not the time and place to do it. Yeah. And, and I, I agree totally. Um, but you don't ever see any baseball players not kneel. I'm not stand up. Right. You ever seen any NBA guys? Nope. Up yet. So the only the only other sport I did hear about was uh, in women, it was women a women's soccer game. Um, okay. There was there was some some protests, but again, and then that was not. I don't think that that you know Kaepernick. I think you know maybe we will have him as a, as a guest on the show, yeah. but because uh, he's not doing a whole lot now. Yeah, yeah. Got but I, time, I got from my understanding, Kaepernick's protest was uh, law enforcement. Yeah. Uh, racial discrimination, tower of abuse, and, and then you know. the soccer player was. I think it was more of a LBGT protest. That, right. that you know, that, right. you know. So, so now you got you got one action, and, and you got different people doing it. Right. And then Ka- Ka- for Ka- different causes. Kaepernick's got to regret what he started. What he started. I mean, the guy's been out of football, and and you don't know well he's been blackballed. In my opinion, I mean, yeah. they can say no all they want, but who wants that guy? Who wants that guy on your team, no matter how good or bad he is? Because it's a distraction, no matter what. Yeah. Oh, no matter yeah. Which yeah. way you slice that. Yeah. And you know, people. Are like, oh, let me talk. Is he going to kneel? Is he going to stand? Blah blah. Oh God, oh my. Yeah. But that that's just ridiculous. Now the baseball had their. Uh, in terms of baseball, it doesn't do. As much for their Hall of Fame as football does, it seemed like it was. They had their Hall of Fame guys, and they mm-hmm. there wasn't a speech. I mean, I didn't see anything on TV. Maybe I'm sure there was, but yeah, they, oh yeah, they, they have the speeches. Much, yeah, yeah. didn't seem as much as a build up. As yeah, maybe, I, maybe because you know, maybe because baseball season is in the middle of baseball season. Right. You know what I mean? As yeah. opposed to football, there's no football now. Yeah. Kind of kicks it off. So I yep. mean, maybe it's different. Yeah. But baseball, you had Vlad Gamero, Trevor Hoffman, Chipper Jones, Alan Trammell, Jack Morris. 
and uh, who was the other guy? Uh, Jim Tomei were the mm -hmm. ones that, for baseball. They were all pretty good candidates. Um, baseball is tough. I mean, you, you, I guess you compare your you compare your numbers to other former Hall of Famers, mm -hmm. and the, and you can uh, you know pick pick and choose who you want. But I mean, uh, interesting interesting. Um, dilemma for Hall of Fame is somebody like CeCe Sabathia. Is he a Hall of Famer? Mm -hmm. 18 years. Yeah, that, you know. uh, the the big man, Mike Francesa, he would, he would always use the term uh, an accumulator. Yeah. If you have X number of wins or like a huge run. number of doubles yeah. or home runs or something right. like that, but you did it over a tremendously long Time. career, right. you, you got to take kind of that with a grain of salt right. and say, right. okay, well, but he only averaged this or that or whatever right. else it happened right. to be. So yeah, It's a tough, I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. But a lot of it, and that you know, so T.O. was going on about their their methods or whatever else. Well, I mean, a lot of this is arbitrary, right? You know, so do you look at just numbers, right? And and, and is it, I say, do you do average whatever's per right. year, average right. wins, home runs, uh, touchdown catches, right. or whatever right. else? Uh, but there's there is that intangible right. of you know the guy he was a bad boy or he was uh, I think a perfect know, detracted example. from right. his team. I think a perfect example of that if I'm not is Howie Long in the Hall of Fame. I don't believe so. No, he's not. Okay, I thought he might be, but it, uh, yeah, I thought he was. Um, and based on on, based on that, based on that, um, he got in there because he was a great guy, but he wasn't that that great of a player. He was a good player. Where did he play his college football? Out of Villanova. Oh, I thought I'd get you. Nah, nah, yeah, but he, he didn't play that long. Either. He played 12, 13 years, I think. I missed long enough. But yeah. Anyway. But yeah, that's a that's a one guy I can think of. But uh, obviously, if you're a good guy, it helps. Uh, you yeah. know, and people like you. I mean, you're going to get more votes. Like anything else in this world, if people like you, you're going to get advantage. Um, now the NBA is still in news a little bit. Carmelo signed with <laughs> Houston Rockets. Yeah. So I, I was wondering, he gets 29 million. Does he get half that um, because he only plays offense or? <laughs> no, you play defense, you're gonna get 58 million. You know. Yeah. By the way, uh, Howie Long is in the Hall of Fame. He is. That's also yeah. yeah, yeah. He wasn't that. I mean, he wasn't. Nah, he wasn't number. a huge impact no, player. No, no, no. But he, but he was a good guy, and afterwards, and on the shows, and yeah. you know, squeaky clean and all that. So uh, that's a good example. I mean, just a, one more thing on the Hall of Fame. You, you know, I mean, uh, say an offensive lineman. There's offensive linemen in the Hall of Fame. There's no stats on an offensive line. How do you do that? Yeah, you know. So that's strictly. They're, well, they get him now is is uh, is you know sacks allowed, hold, uh, all those type of things. But yeah, yeah, right, but it's not. Base. You know, I mean, okay. If if I'm a defensive no. end, it's you know how many tackles, how many sacks. Right. I think with the offensive line, it's longevity, size, yeah. um, you know, reputation. I think a lot of those things yeah. happen because you got to get some linemen in there. Same thing with punters. You know, Ray guy. Yeah. You know, how many how many kickers are in there? Not yeah. Many, you know, yeah. I mean, that's another thing too. George Blanda. You figure, yeah, you figure. Well, ben, Blanda was a quarterback. Benetari. Um, Benetari's uh, going to be in there, and then who else? Um, uh, the guy in uh, the Patriots, Koskowski. I mean, you know, those guys are yeah. long, long, and, and great kickers. I mean, yep. you know, so they, they uh, do they have a shot? Who knows? You know? Yeah. Um, Yankees, Yankees got their butts kicked over the weekend by the Red Sox. Okay, oh, I, I was wondering, I was, I was looking at the clock, and yeah. I was wondering if you were going to allow this hoping conversation. I hope we run out of time for that. But steered I, over to, to baseball here. I, I didn't got know. It, I got to address the elephant in the room. Shut I got to. You know, got to. So the first night, Thursday night, they get beat, well, I think it's 15 to 6 or some godforsaken number after they took a 4 nothing lead. And then uh, Jonathan Holt got in there and just uh, the whole broke the dam. And, yep. And, uh, uh, yeah, the, that, I'll say it's about the Red Sox in general. Uh, yeah, I, I think they're the best team in baseball. Overall, they've got, yep. obviously, they got the, I think they're the best batting average in the majors as a team. Um, they're up there with home runs. I think the Yankees might be first. Red Sox are either second or third as far as team home runs. They play great defense, and they, they steal a lot of bases. They play every mm -hmm. facet of the game. Yeah. And they haven't really had any major, major injuries. I mean, Joy was hurt kind of all year. But yeah. they haven't had any major, major, like, crazy injuries. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they sweep the Yankees without Chris Sale even making an appearance. That's the other amazing part of it, yeah. you know, you can think about it. And the, and the Yankees, was a Saturday, they brought up a guy to, to spot had, start. Yeah, Chance Adams came up on Saturday because they had nobody left. They had to use... Uh, did okay. Did all right. Yeah. Three runs, two home runs. They allowed uh, Keith Warren had a two run shot and somebody else had a solo shot. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they left well, three nothing after five innings. But they used uh, um, Louis Sessa, they used him on... Uh, one of those days, I think it was Thursday, to mm -hmm. mop up some innings because uh, he was supposed to start on Saturday. Okay, um, so that, that's why he came he was up. Okay. To start on Saturday, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, all, they, they almost could have done the uh, Tampa Bay 
Ray's method of starting a, 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 a relief pitcher, first couple innings, six batters, and do it that way. They could have done that. Yeah. They decided not to. I thought they should have started Sonny Gray or. Uh, uh, Sonny just, Gray, yeah. he's just been a bomb this year. Last night he pitched. He pitched well last night though. But they pitched, for, the, for the year, and he's pitching against the White Sox. So yeah. last night he pitched three shot innings um, and saved the game for the Yankees when they they won in the, like the twelfth inning, I think yeah. it was. But, but I mean, good. all the all the the yeah. hubbub last year when when the, oh the yeah. Yankees got Sonny Gray this night. Yeah. I mean he's he's been. A, the other thing too, awful. people don't remember about Sonny Gray is he pitched in in Oakland and Oakland's a freaking cavern. And, you know, there's so much room out there. Yeah. That, that it behooves you to pitch there because yeah. the balls are getting caught. You know? Right. Because Yankee Stadium, that's why he's way at a seven point something ERA at Yankee yeah. Stadium because balls are going out or off the wall. They're not they're not getting caught. Right. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah, last. Uh, so the last, Yankees are nine back, nine back, and they're two up in the wild card. As yeah, they're the they gonna watch the wild card now for crying out loud. Yeah, but the next eight. So series, right, right now it's Yankees in Oakland. Yep. And then, but Seattle's only two games back. Back of Oakland, I think. And then I think the next team is maybe six and a half or something yeah, back. Yeah, well, yeah. But I mean, at this point, nine, nine back. It's two months ago, on August tenth. Yeah. That's getting to the. Well, you know, I mean, if they're. Eight to ten games back, September one. I mean, that's, right. that's basically well, it. It's a, yeah. The other thing too is that the Yankees have the next eight series that they play. All the combined average of these teams are like uh, forty points. Yeah, they got Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, they got yeah. the Mets. They got yeah. Yeah, they got the teams that are the lower echelon of the league. Yeah. But the problem with the Yankees this year, they haven't played well against the the, the poor sisters. They, mm -hmm. they you know uh, they split against Baltimore, whereas whereas the white the Red Sox would go ten and two against Baltimore, where the Yankees yep. are six and six. So yeah. I mean that, that you know adds up quickly. Yeah. Um, so that that's been a they have a fair number of games with well they still have I think nine games against the Sox. Yep. And then I think maybe as many with, with I think you play a lot of division games in September more than so they, so they have a lot of Baltimore. I mean, Toronto's not horrible. They could play well. They could play, you know, win two out of three, but they, they need the Red Sox to, to lose. lose. And the Red Sox never lose. Yeah. It seems like they never lose. They're mm -hmm. on pace to, you know, I don't know if anybody will beat the, the 98 Yankees when they were 100 and, they won 114 games. I don't yeah. know if anybody beat that, but but they're, they're playing so well that uh, they, the thing is about the about the Red Sox, even uh, on Friday, Porcello shut them out 3 nothing, pitched a one hitter. Yeah. And uh, he was. I think he threw 80, he only threw 86 pitches for a complete game shutout. And I think mm -hmm. 68 of those 86 pitches were strikes. Yeah. And I mean, the guy doesn't, you know. Now we, when we had a, on one of the shows, I don't know, a month or so ago, I, I, we had that stat that Smoltz had thrown 86 pitches for yeah. a complete game shutout. It just never happens anymore. Yeah. It never happens. The thing is, a lot of these games, too, you watch a lot of these games, if, if, if guys are following, following the pitches off. I mean, I was watching. Um, and especially uh, Yankee Red Sox. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, mean those you, are you could be pitching very well, but at, at 20 you score, you're throwing 45 pitches because, you know, 30 of them are foul balls for crying out loud. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Parcello pitched great on Friday, and then Avaldi uh, pitched uh, fantastic on Saturday. Yeah. 100 miles an hour a couple times. He hit, the, he hit his fastball. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing about Parcello, though, with the Yankees is that the Yankees are – very, very good. Do a very good job of, of laying off bad pitches, and Purcell was pounding the strike zone. Yeah, and they weren't they weren't making good contact, so consequently they couldn't get anything going. Yeah, you know, so uh, yeah. that was huge. And then uh, on Sunday, David Price looked great for six innings. Yeah, shut, shut him out, and then uh, then they blew that that lead in the ninth. They were up three one, and. Uh, yeah, first, and Chapman came in and he walked a couple guys, and then uh, JD Martinez got a base hit to drive in two, and then Andrew Har with two outs threw the ball away yeah. at first base. Uh, you know, a tough play. He, he, he undercut it, and then Bird couldn't scoop it out of, out of the dirt, and that, that tied it 4 4, and then they won uh, yep. an inning or two later with uh, Ben and Tanny got a, a game winner. Yeah. But uh, it was interesting about Sunday night, uh, I want to make a point that Shane Robinson played. The only thing I could understand about Boone, I think Boone's a good manager. I mean, in baseball is, you know, who knows what, what the right moves are in so many situations. But on Sunday, he started Voight at first base, and he batted six, sixth or seventh. Now, Voight, they got a, this kid Voight from St. Louis, hasn't yeah. played much. Yeah. Big, big, strong kid. Um, but they had Walker on the bench. Now, I don't care how much or what the situation, you got to start Walker at first base that game. You've got to. Okay, he's been hit, he's been hitting well last month. He's been been over 300 last last month. Mm -hmm. And and Voight got up in the first inning uh, against the Red Sox. The base load, I think he struck out. So I mean, you know, you get a base hit there and, get, and you know get a lead, jump on him quick. Who knows? Yeah. You know. And and then he has Shane Robinson in right field. I guess I guess Stanton was a DH, but I mean, 
why would you put Robinson in right field? And then you got four, you got two outs in the lineup, really. Mm -hmm. Then you know, then you got Romine, and so you've got Romine's been cooled off a lot. I, I just don't understand why resting guys are giving him a day. There are certain times you give him a day, and certain times you don't certain give him a day. Certain times you can't. Right. And I, I, I wouldn't give anybody a day against the Red Sox. You know, no. they bust your bust your butt, and then against the White Sox, you get a day. Right, right. You know, right. I yeah, mean, yeah. I don't understand what what yeah. what, what the uh, the theory there, less less they're hurt. I, and actually, Gardner didn't play the other night too. I mean, the same thing. Uh, you know, you don't get your rhythm as a baseball player by playing two or three and then sitting two or three. You know, it just doesn't work that way. You've got to get in there every night and, and make the adjustments yourself. You have to adjust pitch to pitch, bat to bat, game yeah. to game. Yeah. That, that's how good players do it. Yeah. You know, and, and if you don't have the opportunity, you, you, you can have an issue. Um, but last night they, uh, they were up uh, three to one. Uh, Stan had a base. Stan had a two and home or night thing. Put him a three one going to bottom of ninth. Okay. Or bottom ninth, bottom of tenth, I forget what it was. And then uh, 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 Jose Abreu hit a two and home with two strikes on him to tie to three three. Okay. Then then the Yankees won it in the uh, in the twelfth, I think, after Gray was shut down for three. So they, they pulled that out. I mean they, you know, big struggle against the White Sox. And you know, besides Abreu, who who can you tell me one guy to play for White Sox? Yeah. Nobody, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, you got this kid, uh, Eaton, who played center field for Washington. made two unbelievable catches over the last first two games. The first uh, first game they played Monday night, he went up over the fence and was a good foot over the fence and caught, caught Bird's potential three went over. Yeah. And then last night, he, uh, the catcher, Hiyashi, uh, hit it, it went out there, same, almost the same exact situation, yeah. went over the fence and robbed him too. It was amazing to get there. Another situation where he made a nice catch on a short fly ball, threw it home, and the guy didn't tag up, and that was another nice play. But he's very good defensively, this guy Eaton. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're in a rebuilding mold too, the White Sox. Um, you know, because uh, the, they've got the third, I think the third worst record in baseball besides the, uh, the Marlins and who's the other one? Yeah, Marlins and somebody else have the three the three worst records. Um, so what about our Mets? Uh, our Mets? Are you going to jump on the bandwagon? Uh, you know, I feel sorry for him. I was, I was yeah. at the club on I feel sorry for him. I think it was last Friday, and I'm talking to a guy who's a huge Giants or a Yankees fan, rather, and he goes, "I think I'm going to come over to your team." <laughs> it's like, no, 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 you don't want to do that. Hey, uh, so big news today for the uh, for the Mets. Yep. They had a, they had an afternoon getaway game today, okay. and they. Uh, Beat the Reds, which okay. is no, no great accomplishment. Okay. But uh, uh, DeGrom had picked up 10 more strikeouts, got his ERA down to 1.77. And he got a win. And he got a win. And he got a, w. And he got a win. That's huge. Which is shocking. Nice. Um, I, it's just, you know, dysfunction upon dysfunction. Matz is, Matz is still on a DL. He, he, they put him on a 10-day, and it doesn't look like he's going to come off. I, Wheeler's yeah. been pitching good. They just Wheeler's pitching good. Yeah. They they, they've got runs. some decent pitchers. I mean, Syndergaard looks like he's coming around a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, the, you know, know what drives me nuts is, is arguably they have the best the best starting rotation in baseball. The um they just can't score runs. And the other thing with I don't under why why do you play Batista? Why do you play Yeah Frazier? Yeah, why are you not giving I mean there, there's why nothing you, to play for. Why does Reyes get anything? I mean Yeah. Reyes has uh, been getting a lot of play time. Yeah, that. he's been in there playing third I mean they finally put Jeff McNeil in there, minor league uh, second base. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guy's yep. batting three thirty five. Yeah. Uh, you know, 10, 15 games, small sample size. But you know what? Yeah. Let's find out if he can play. Bring up this kid, Peter Alfonso, who was a first baseman. Big kid. Yep. Let him play first. Wilmer Flores can play. I don't know what he's going to do with him. He's a, you know, he's a good player, but he's nothing. Walk uh, off Wilmer? Come on. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's the best of what he got. And then you got your, your buddy Nimmo there. But, uh, <laughs> My buddy Nimmo. Yeah, all star. Uh, and uh, no, I, was, I, was, I was laughing at myself today. I was thinking, let's compare every position the Yankees have. Compared to every position the Mets have. No, we're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to talk about is <laughs> you've got every guy in the Yankees is better than every guy in the Mets, except for if Cespedes was in there, he'd be better than Garner. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that's what and, and that's what's the amazing part. There's not one and good Fred guy. Fred Wilpon scratching his head, going, "I can't figure yeah. out why we're not winning the, games." Now the, you look the other way. The top three Mets pitchers are better than the top three Yankee pitchers, except for Severino, maybe. Yeah. But you know, I mean, so yeah. that's interesting the way in the bullpens, no comparison. So yeah, you know, you got Pawecki, and then you've got. Um, the other catcher. I, they, they, uh, 
Yeah. yeah. Just, yep. Rosario, I read an article yesterday, where the guy said he, they searched San Rosario down at double A <laughs> for, a, for the month of August to get his act together. I mean, you know, here's another guy. It's like nobody's coaching this guy up. He just yeah. he hasn't got any better either. Yeah. The guy can fly, doesn't steal any bases. Doesn't steal bases. You know? So, yeah. uh, well, they do have him leading off, leading off, so which I like that. Yeah, you know, leading off, which is good. Let him, let him, let him develop. He should be a leadoff header. Yeah, know, that's skill. Yeah, down the road. Yeah. Uh, uh, getting off the uh, Mets, which we can't do that fast enough. Uh, yeah. The National League mm -hmm. is shaping up to be. I mean, this could be a legendary September because every division is close. Yeah. The, I mean, you get the. Uh, the Nationals are six out, so they're probably done. But you know, Atlanta's a game and a half behind Philadelphia. Milwaukee's two and a half games behind. Philadelphia and the Braves are behind bad. Chicago, and yeah. then and then Arizona and the Dodgers are, yeah. you know, yeah. they're tied in the win column yeah. right now. Yeah. Whereas in the American League, you know, you start to get some distance in all these teams. Yeah, Arizona's kind of quietly hanging in there. You know, I don't know much here about them them too much. But they're yeah. they're 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 tied with well. Los Angeles in the win column. They're half yeah. a game back. So, yeah. I mean yeah. it, that. To me, that's and yeah, the Astros, that's what you want. Astros had a, had a couple bumps in the road. They had a couple injuries. They had uh, yep. Tuve was out and Correa was out. Yeah, two guys. They had somebody playing second, somebody short. I never heard of one day. And uh, but yeah, they they've had a little a little, little issue there. Um, you see the guy. Um, the Nationals are playing the Yankee, uh, the Mets, and that was that twenty six to nine game, twenty six to twenty five to four, four or whatever, nine, whatever it was. Nine, yeah. Nine. And you see Sean Kelly do his stuff on the count. You see that? <laughs> yeah. that, that reminds like a ten year old little leaguer, like, yeah. oh, I'm not, I don't want to play anymore. He threw his glove on the ground, and he was cut the next day. DFA, Oof. yeah, designated for assignment. Then Adios. They, then they traded in Oakland. Yep. Oh yeah, he's, I can't believe he's, I remember he's a former Yankee. Sean Kelly yeah. played for the Yankees years ago. The funny one, and I don't know who it was when Reyes came into the game to pitch, and he's oh, yeah. throwing, you know, it was Zimmerman, you know, 74 yeah. mile an hour meatballs, and he and he hit Zimmerman on the yeah. leg, and, and Zimmerman, you yeah. know, kind of yeah. pretended he was going to charge yeah. out there. So so Reyes was the only guy in Major League ba Baseball history to allow two home runs. And next day hit two home. Hit two home runs. <laughs> next day, yeah. <laughs> quite, quite a distinction there. I think, the, I think it was a setup game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was, uh, you know, I mean, hey, it, it, I mean, not to that extent, but it yeah. happens quite well, a bit. In 2015, if I, you know, I mean, I, I remember when the Mets went to the World Series, it was two or three games from from the last. You know, it was maybe like the Friday, and the, and the season's going to wrap up on 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 that yep. uh, Sunday and they and they're going to go to to you know go to the playoffs and they got just absolutely shellacked mm -hmm. like 19 to 1 or something yep. like that. Eh, so sometimes games get out yeah. of hand. The difference was in 2015, you know, they said okay, well we're not going to waste pitchers or whatever else. Yeah. We're just we're just going to let this one go. Yeah. Now, you know. Well, that was like a Monday night. Uh, the Yankees got the Yankees beat the White Sox uh, seven nothing. Lance Lynn looked good. He's retired 19 guys wrong. Yeah. Again, it was against the White Sox, but take that with a grain of salt, but uh uh, the White Sox put Matt Davis on the mound. He was throwing 91. Yeah. He's a position. Yeah. I don't know position he plays. I don't know plays the alpha. There was a, one of the Ken Seikos did mop-up duty in a yeah, game like that. He got hurt. Yeah. Hurt his arm. Yeah. 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 Remember the time Seiko got hit in the head and the ball went over the fence? He was on the He was boink and it went over the fence. Yeah. That was He's a, yeah, part soccer player. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. <coughs> Want to talk about the uh, World Cup soccer at all? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> Moving no. on. Moving on. Um, let me see what else we can talk about. Uh, I read an article on the, 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 the Tampa Bay Rays. They really gutted their team. And, and they're 56 and 53 at this point. Mm -hmm. A couple games over 500. They had 13 players. Um, what is it? 13 players they got rid of. And no. Uh, 13 players with six or more home runs. <coughs> they got rid of them all except for Kiermaier. And they got rid of Archer, Cobb, Odorizzi, all gone. They had the most starts of combined mm -hmm. for yep, all yep, their yep, team. Yep. And their top three prospects, Anthony uh, Bando, um, Jose DeLon, and Brent Honeywell, all, all combined for one start, and all three have Tommy John surgery. Okay. This is all this year. And the top four relievers are all gone. Uh, Alex Cobb was one of them. They got rid of Wilson Ramos, their catcher. Yep. Uh, Denny uh, Echeria, their shortstop, go to him. Mm -hmm. They got rid of Devin Denard Span, outfielder. And then they had uh, Avaldi, they, they sent to the Red Sox. Yeah. They got rid of all those guys and Matt Andrews as well. Yeah. So their, their, their premise was to build from the farm system, which has gotten a lot better. Yep. Um, play emphasize defense. 
because mm-hmm. I can keep getting the game sometimes, and then try to build credibility. And yeah, uh, you know. And, right. and uh, I was just having a conversation, and somebody said, "Well, you know, that's what the Mets need to do." The problem is, the Mets don't have, other than pitching, yeah. they don't have anything to, yeah. you know, they, you know, they don't have that player who who you're going to get. Uh, right. Okay, we'll get this guy and three right. prospects or whatever right. else. They, they just don't have anything, so they've got to go through the farm system. Right. Well, they've done a lousy job there too. Right. So you're either going to spend a lot of money, which is the Wilpons are not going to do, yeah. or you're going to. Be stuck with this for three or four or five years I while mean, you develop. So. In theory, in theory, again, it's easier for us to say sitting there. We don't know the details, but I would put Dominic Smith on left. I put Conforto on center. Nemo on right. I put Pete Alfonso at first. McNeil at second. Rosario at, at short, and I probably yeah. keep Fraser or Flores at, at third. Yeah. And then the catchers are catchers, and, and just keep that team together for three weeks to see what happens. Yeah. You know, keep it kind of the same batting order and let, let them go. Yeah. I, I bet Rosario, maybe Rosario first, Nemo second, Conforto third, uh, McNeil, and then Alfonso, and, and then the hell with Batista, the heck with uh, mm-hmm. those guys. Why play them? Yeah. You know, why play them? They're not, they're not helping you win any games. They're not, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're veterans. They're old. They're not going to, you know, Frazier's a great guy, and he's pretty good at clubhouse. So he's not, you know, you can keep him around a little bit. But, you know, Batista and Reyes, I mean, I don't understand what the, you know, what the loyalty is there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a business. I don't know. You can't, in like the business, if you can't do the job, um, they get rid of you. Yeah, and replace you with somebody who can, or somebody younger, yeah. or somebody better, and, and they got to find out. So, because Alfonso is like 26, and McNeil, I think McNeil and Alfonso are both like 26. Yeah, I mean that's He's old. Getting up there. That's getting older. Yeah, somebody's in baseball. Lord's not. I mean, you, you're Andohar, you're talking and Torres are 21, yeah. 22. Right. And the kid from uh, uh, Nationals, Juan Soto, is 19. Yeah. So, I mean, you got guys in there. That yeah, you got a 26-year-old who we think might work. Well, right. If he does work, it's got to happen in the next eight years. Bryce Harper's yeah. 26. Trout's 26 or 27. I yeah. mean, you know, and you got these guys that are still in the Myers are 26. Yeah. Either, you know, let them play or get rid of them. I yeah. don't know. You, you got to find out. Yeah. And they can't do any worse than what you got out there. They just can't. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah. I, you, you got you to play these guys. And, and what, what are they afraid of? And Mickey Calloway, you know, if they fire you after a year, that, that's on them, really, because it's not really fair for him, you know, with all the injuries they've gone through. Yeah. I get, I, I'd probably give him until half, halfway next year. Yeah. You know, if Seth is back, I'd like give more of a, of a, of a, Truer test, but right now, it's hard to fire anyone. I mean, you can't you can't blame a manager on, on these kind of things and, yeah. and the yeah. injuries and losses. Yep, yep, I mean, yep. it's not the manager's fault. Yeah. He's not out there playing. Yeah, yeah. A couple of times they, they, you know, pitching changes or things like that. It does affect you. But generally speaking, I mean, the guy's got to hit. Yeah. He's oh yeah. Hit and play. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, there's something else. But uh, yeah. Yeah. The Mets. I mean, speaking of the Nationals, a uh, couple two weeks ago, we go a. Uh, I had a chance to go down to our nation's capital. Oh, okay. Then down in what was the they call it the Navy Yard area, okay. where they built uh, where they built the National Stadium. Holy moly! I hadn't been down there in years. So I went, you, I went to school down went, in that went area. To the Nationals? Uh, they weren't they weren't in town, but oh, okay. I went down to that area. Um, I mean, it's really turned into a beautiful yeah. part of the city. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Back in the day, I mean, you, nice. you'd never go down there. Right, right. But uh, yeah, DC's they really kind of cleaned up the whole waterfront right. and everything. Right. So uh, yeah, nice spot. So you know, where, where they had built it was uh, was quite the spot. I was out in so the Capitol Center, which is up pretty close to the okay. White House. That's up on the yeah. other side, yeah. you know, north of the mall. Yeah. Um, so yeah, had a nice little getaway. Um, I went to Dallas about two years ago. My one of my best friends, Mike, lives there, and I took a tour of the uh, AT&T Stadium. Oh yeah, the Cowboys. Yeah, it's a uh, soft season. Was like I forget. Now their TV is almost as big as the one in your living room, right? <laughs> the TV. In the room? Yeah, you should see that thing. <laughs> it, was, it was unbelievable. What is it, like a hundred feet or something. Uh, or? It just yeah, it's humongous. You can go there and just and you can pay like ninety five dollars and stand in room and watch it on that big giant screen. Um, so we go in there and uh, first of all, something amazing about that is that they have the uh, the, the stadiums there and they have parking right around it. Which is which is fine. Yeah. But they also have shuttle parking. But the parking right immediately around the area where you walked it was two hundred dollars to park. Nah. Two hundred dollars just to park. And God knows what the seats are. But um, they they have they have all the uh, they have these uh, box boxes um, that basically they sell them to corporations. Luxury uh, boxes. Luxury boxes. Yeah. yeah. They fit you know ten twenty people whatever. But you have to. Buy it for all all the home games, and it's X amount of money, you know, twenty, thirty thousand, whatever the heck it is, and okay. you get certain things. We went, they took it up to Jerry Jones's box. That was pretty neat. Okay. And then we went to the locker room, 
went through there. And then the Dallas Cowboy cheerleader locker room, <laughs> which, which is all empty. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. it was empty. Nobody was around. And then, uh, and then they, uh, what else did they do? Uh, okay, and then they had um, my friend. Friend of mine went to a, uh, a game there one time, and he said it was twelve dollars for a bottle of water, eighteen dollars for a can of beer, twenty-five dollars for a margarita. Okay. Said, Going with three guys, I got this round. All right, ten dollars. <laughs> You're gonna get a buzz, right? What the heck? That's amazing. I got four rounds. Cost me five hundred dollars. Uh, Jerry, Jerry's doing okay. That's amazing. Maybe he can buy the Mets. That was amazing. They ate all, all the souvenirs and everything else. Yeah. But yeah. So uh, next uh, two weeks from now, we talk about we'll, we'll we'll have a little closer to the opening season for football. Yeah. Getting ready uh, for football. Ryder, Ryder Cup teams will be selected yep. by then. We'll talk about we'll Ryder Cup. And Odell then, Beckham uh, will be signed. Oh, Beckham might be signed. Signed by that. Might signed be signed. Be the signed Jets will have 23 players on the uh, be hurt physically now. unable yeah. to Darnell perform be list. Hurt by now. Be out for the, year. the pup list will be like this. Yeah. 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 And that'll do it. All right. All right, George. Good hey, job. Hey, Joe, thanks that a lot. It was a pleasure. All right. Fun. You bet. All right, boss.